Good morning and welcome to our service on this Sunday after Easter. The reading for this morning in the Gospels is the story of Jesus coming and meeting with the disciples and particularly with Thomas. It's a story that asks us to explore our own faith and our doubts. And we remember as we meet together that the important thing is not the extent or the strength of our faith, but the one in whom we place that trust. So we'll begin by singing together the song, Faithful One, So Unchanging. I'm going to lead us in some opening prayers and as usual the words will be on the screen for you to follow along. Mighty God, in whom we know the power of redemption, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us with the knowledge of the final morning when in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we will share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life and forever freed to be your people. Living God, long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them that our witness may be as bold 
our love as deep and our faith as true. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and you restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war and greed, that the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love and peace. To the glory of your name. Amen. Time now to pay our weekly visit to the Virtual Sunday School. Hello and welcome to Virtual Sunday School. Grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this. When you're stuck at home with time to spare Can't go outside, you're not going anywhere Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit Tune into Virtual Sunday School Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too. Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? Today, we're going to look at the theme of sacrifice. We're going to look at a story from the Bible, some fun crafts, some creative prayers, and then finish with a final thought. Today, we're going to look at the story of Paul and Silas in prison, which can be found in Acts chapter 16, verses 23 to 36. To help us tell the story today, I would like to introduce you to Reggie and Dilly. Now Reggie is going to be playing the part of Silas, Dilly is going to be the jailer and as well as telling the story, I am going to play Paul. Now Reggie and Dilly aren't the only ones who are going to help me today, actually I'm going to need your help as well. Now whenever Silas says, can we go out yet? I need you guys to join in with me by saying no, not yet. Let's have a practice. Can we go out yet? No, not yet. Excellent. Now let's tell the story. One day, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison and the jailer was told to guard them very carefully. To make sure they couldn't escape, the jailer put them into the innermost cell and put chains around their feet. Paul and Silas were stuck in prison. Silas said, can we go out yet? No, not yet. They had to stay there all night. And prison isn't a very exciting place. It's easy to get bored. And Silas got very bored. Can we go out yet? No, not yet. Instead, Paul and Silas found a great way to pass the time by praying and singing praises to God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Finally, it got to midnight and they were still singing and still praying and all the other prisoners could hear them. Then suddenly there was an earthquake! Ah! All the prison doors flew open, all the chains fell off and they could leave the prison! Silas said, finally! Can we go out now? No, not yet! Now the jailer had been asleep and when he woke up, he was so scared. If his boss thought that he'd let all these prisoners escape, then... <sighs> Wait, Paul said. We're all still here. He fell before Paul and Silas and asked them, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, Paul said. That night, the jailer took Paul and Silas out of their prison cell and round to his house and they shared a meal with his family and talked all about Jesus so that the jailer and all his family became Christians. Well, now they were out of their jail cell, so Silas asked, Can we stay out now? 
But you know what Paul replied? No, not yet. You see, they were still under arrest. So they went back into prison and trusted that God would find a solution. The very next morning, a message came from the jailer's boss telling him to release Paul and Silas and that they could go in peace. Can we go out now? Yes. Yes, we can. Or you can make a few chains and pop them in your window to help brighten up the neighbourhood. Although we're stuck at home, we still have so much to be thankful for. Paul and Silas didn't have any of the amazing things that we've got now and they still praise God. Today we are going to draw a present on a piece of paper and then in each of the four corners we are going to draw or write something that we are thankful for, that we have or can do right here at home. And these are going to be our gifts of thanks and praise to God. And so a final thought. Paul and Silas made a sacrifice to help someone else. Even when they could have gone free, they stayed in prison. And you know, we can make that same sacrifice today by staying at home even when we're finding it hard. Remember, Paul and Silas got out of prison in the end and we won't be stuck indoors forever. <laughs> for our Bible readings this week, Catherine and then Beatrice are reading for us. Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. 
I say of the holy people who are in the land. They are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always to the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and, and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We come to pray together again. Risen Lord Jesus, you come to us in the most surprising and the most ordinary ways. Just when we begin to forget or doubt you, when we begin to live our lives as if you don't matter, you come speaking to us, feeding us, encouraging us. You never forget us or fail us. Without you, we are weak and fail often. But with you, we are strong. May we be made deeply aware of your presence this day. God of the prophets, you fulfilled your promise that Christ would suffer and rise to glory. Open our minds to understand the scriptures that we may be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Risen Christ, whose absence leaves us paralysed, but whose presence is overwhelming, breathe on us abundant life. That where we cannot see, we may have courage to believe and that we may be raised with you. Amen. Do you remember how Jesus died and rose again with new life to share with all of us? On the evening of the day he rose, his friends were gathered together in a room. The door was locked. They were afraid. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what the leaders were going to do. Suddenly, even though the door was locked, Jesus was there among them. He said, Peace be with you. He showed them his hands where the nails had gone. He showed them his side where the spear had gone as he died. They knew it was him. It was his real body. He wasn't a ghost. He was a person who was alive again 
with a different kind of life that would last forever. He told them, I am giving you the gift of my spirit. I am filling you with my power and my love. And then he was gone. Now at that time, one of Jesus' friends, Thomas, wasn't with them. When he arrived, they told him, We have seen the Lord. We have seen Jesus. He is alive again. It's true. And Thomas said, I don't believe you. Unless I see for myself his hands where the nails went and his side where the spear went, I won't believe. Eight days later, they were all together again. Thomas was there this time, and again the doors were shut and locked. And again, even though the doors were shut and locked, Jesus appeared with them, and he said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here in my hands and here in my side so that you can touch and believe. And Thomas did. And he said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen me. But I say, Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. And that's our story. Now we can wander together about the story and you and wander with the people who are with you, if you like. I wonder what your favourite part of that story was. I wonder what the most important part of that story was. I wonder where you are in this story. I wonder why Thomas didn't believe Jesus' other friends when they told him what had happened to them. I wonder who you trust to tell you the truth and why you trust them. I wonder who has told you and helped you know about Jesus. I wonder what it felt like to touch Jesus. I wonder whose touch you might be missing now. I wonder if you could take out anything from the story and still have all the story that you need. I wonder if you have anything in your house that you would like to use to play with this story or make something about this story. And we can keep wondering about this story. Our wondering is never finished. We never know all the answers. But for now, our story is done.
Perhaps you can think for a few minutes about pairs of words which are opposite. Things like up and down, left and right, west and east, true and false. I wonder which word you would pair with the word faith. What would you put as its opposite? I came across this image. I wonder what you think of it. Is it true that doubt is the opposite of faith? Well, that seems to make sense. Isn't faith about being sure, about being certain, about being convinced about something? And so if we doubt, if we're unsure, isn't that a lack of faith and therefore the opposite? Well, actually, I'm not sure it's quite that simple. The Bible gives us a definition of faith in Hebrews 11 and verse 1. It says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Knowing something now is different from knowing what will happen in the future. However certain we are, however sure, however much we know, and however much we think we can predict the course of events, it doesn't always play out in that way. Who remembers their New Year resolutions of the 1st of January 2020? You remember those things that you reasonably expected to do during the course of the year, those plans you had, those holidays that you had booked. Well, where are those plans today? We all exercise faith in all kinds of ways. In fact, it's impossible to live without faith. What varies is the extent of that faith and the objects that we put our faith in. Faith can be great or little. And we can actually have faith and doubt at the same time. Doubt isn't, I don't think, the opposite of faith. Doubt is a sort of qualifier, a modifier, that sits alongside our faith. Think about some of the things we put faith and trust in. Ourselves, our governments, in science, in aeroplanes, in taxi drivers. Maybe you can understand that in those situations, faith and doubt can go alongside. Who hasn't sat in an aeroplane, having faith in the destination, but also those niggling doubts about whether you'll arrive there safely? Think about the Apostle Thomas. I wonder if sometimes he doesn't get unfair treatment. He's labelled, isn't he, as Doubting Thomas. That's a phrase that's entered our language. It's come into our culture and it's used of someone who perhaps doesn't exercise enough faith. Maybe people who use that phrase are even unaware of its biblical origins. Thomas was actually looking for hard evidence. He was looking for a first-hand account. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In one of the online reflections that I did recently for our Methodist circuit, I was thinking about fake news how often we, we take in and pass on information without really checking it out for ourselves, getting first-hand evidence. And for something as monumental as that which faced the disciples, the return of Jesus from the dead, Thomas wanted to know for himself. And he didn't say to the disciples, that's crazy, you're all a bunch of fools, I'll never believe anything like that. He allowed for the possibility, unless I see. And that, of course, contains within it the opposite idea. If I do see, then I'll believe. His doubt wasn't anti-faith. It was a seeking after truth. And I came across another couple of images, which we're going to look at now. And I find these a little bit more helpful than the first one. Because doubt isn't the opposite of faith. 
In fact, doubt can be a route that leads us to faith. We can reach a destination in a number of ways. Going in the exact opposite direction won't get us there, but making a detour by way of a few questions or a few feelings of being confused and uncertain, well, that can eventually lead us on a path to the truth. This week, the Sunday after Easter, it sometimes goes by the name of Low Sunday. And we think maybe that name comes as a contrast to the great heights and excitement of Easter Sunday. Or for some see it more cynically as the day when congregations fall off again after the many visitors that we experience over Easter Sunday. Actually, interestingly, that may not be true this year as churches are finding that online congregations are holding up and indeed rising in numbers. And I've been reading interesting articles from journalists who've been looking at what's going on in the church culture and saying that they've been going to church not just once but several times on a Sunday to see the various types of services that are on offer. But whatever its origins, in no way should this be a low Sunday for any of us. It should be just as high and exciting as any other Sunday, because it's a day when we, with Thomas, can make our own response, that response of my Lord and my God. Ultimately, the extent and the object of our faith are something that each of us makes a decision about for ourselves. And in many places in the Bible, we're given the instruction to go and see or to come and see. It's what happened at the beginning of Jesus' life. It's what the shepherds did. It's what the Magi did. It's what happened at the end of Jesus' life when the disciples went to the tomb to see for themselves. And it's something that each of us can do. And as we're sat at home, perhaps wondering what to do next, what to fill our days with. Maybe it's something that we can explore for ourselves to go and see, to wonder about our doubts and about our faith. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all you provide for us, for your grace and your many blessings. We bring before you those countries in our world experiencing food shortages, natural disasters and wars. Relieve the suffering of those in need and heal your world, Lord. We pray for those in government and leadership roles. Give them your wisdom and courage. And Lord, we ask for your protection and blessing on all those putting themselves at risk for others. We remember the NHS, all public services, care home staff, teachers, nursing staff and educational staff, essential shop staff, the postal services, the police, the fire brigade, utility companies and voluntary relief workers. Father, the list is long, but these individuals are known to you by name. Shower them with your strength stamina and good health. We pray for ourselves and our families that might be separated at this time. Grant your peace and comfort to all feeling lonely and isolated. We ask for your strength and peace for those struggling to balance work and family demands, especially for young families finding it really hard. We pray for those that are experiencing financial difficulties and who are worried about the future. Draw near to them. We bring before you those that are mourning the loss of a loved one. And also for those who have family members who are sick and can't visit them at this time. Grant them your comfort. We ask for your healing, Father, on all those that are sick and for the protection of those who are caring for them. 
Lord, thank you that you never leave us and that you hear our prayers. Amen. One of the ways that the church has maintained its belief and faith over the centuries is by repeating together carefully thought out words that the church has agreed on. And so we're going to close with a song, the words of the creed set to music, This I Believe. closing prayer. Loving and merciful God, may the Easter fires of this season set our hearts aflame and be the fire that starts other fires in this world. 
hold our hearts close and sing your love to us so that our doubts don't fill our head and make us afraid. May we recognise your face in those around us and enter into their wounds. Give us the gift of your compassion to love them as you love us. Lord, the resurrection of your Son has given us new life and renewed hope. Help us to live as new people in pursuit of the Christian ideal. Grant us wisdom to know what we must do, the will to want to do it, the courage to undertake it, the perseverance to continue to do it, and the strength to complete it. Amen. We often close our services together with the words of the grace. And so this final song are those words set to music, which you might like to sing or to speak or to think to those who have joined us in the service today. Of the Spirit be with.